Stafford Summers East Windsor football team is off to a great start this year. Two games, two wins. And the Bulldogs will look to stay unbeaten tomorrow night against Gilbert Northwestern. Channel 3's Elliot Polakoff is here now to show us how the team takes a unique approach to rewarding hard work. Hey there, Elliot. Hey, yeah, Mark and Aaron, you look at all levels of football these days, what happens after the whistle gets just as much attention as the actual plays being run on the field. That is definitely the case for the Stafford Summers East Windsor Bulldogs, but it's for a good reason. It used to be. If you made a good play on the football field, maybe you got a pat on the back. Now, you get to wear the turnover chain, or even sit in the turnover throne. For the Stafford Summers East Windsor Bulldogs, head coach Brian Mazzone has not one, but three awards he gives out after each week of practice. The Loose Change Award for most forced turnovers, the Hard Hat Award for Scout Team Player of the Week, and new this year, the Championship Belt for Practice Player of the Week. And it's safe to say all three rewards are hot commodities. You have to rub it in the faces of a couple other kids to make them work harder next week. We have a couple of kids who are really obnoxious when they win loose change. Um, and they like to remind you that they won it. And uh, I think last year one kid ran it five, won it five times, and he did not shut up about it. Usually, it's one of the senior leaders who ends up taking home the hardware. But regardless of if a player hears his name called, the effect these awards have on the whole team is undeniable. Kind of like a friendly competition. And uh, it's also like an incentive to like do good and like help your teammates out. We're all friendly. There's never, you know, you don't see like fighting on the field. There's never that. Um, we're all really close, uh, close group of friends. Um, and it just kind of brings a little more fun to the game. And if that's the case, well, then Mazzone has accomplished what he set out to do. Kids in general, any sport you play in high school, they don't like practice. So I think it has added to that where they're excited. They want their picture online. They want to be able to show their girlfriends. They want to show their parents. That was kind of the purpose that I had in doing this. So Coach Pazone actually said he came up with that WWE belt idea after going to WrestleMania with his college buddies. So I thought that at Channel 3 here, we should come up with a trophy for the most takeaways. And I'm going to grab this from you guys. <laughs> what? Just saying. I'm going to leave now. Consider it a welcome <laughs> gift to you, Elliot. Yeah, on, guys. I'm coming prepared with a lot of hard work. We love it. Also want to quickly mention tomorrow night we're going to be in Naugatuck. Our FNF cheerleaders of the week to nominate your school. Download our Channel 3. Sports app. We head to Stafford now. A Stafford West East Windsor Summers hosted SMSA University Classical. This one's all Bulldogs. Score this here. Stafford goes to work. Colton Engel, the quarterback, pulls his own number. Nice run. Stafford's in business. Same drive. The Bulldogs get closer. It's Engel again. This time getting dragged out of bounds after another big gainer. And then finally on the drive, Julian Reves runs it in for the touchdown. Stafford is leading. They're not done. Later in the game, Engel with a swing pass to Revis. He goes in for another touchdown. Stafford looking impressive at home. And then Engel again, this time deep. And finding who else? There he is. There's Julian again. That deal on fire tonight. Part of a big game for Stafford. East Windsor Summers. They get the win at home. 47-6. to six. Our voted for our Subway Game of the Week. So this week we are heading to the Pico League as the Stafford East... Windsor's Summers Co-op welcomes the Rockville Rams. Our Gabrielle Lucivero joins us now from Stafford Springs. Gabby, I hear this is more than just a football game for two of our coaches. Yeah, John Henry, we've got a reunion on our hands tonight. Both head coaches, well, they used to be assistants together at Ellington. Now, of course, the head coach for this co-op team, well, he is in his fourth season and so far so good for Brian Mazzone. His team is off to a 5-0 and start, and that's something that his team credits to having a strong group of returning starters and to having a lot of team chemistry. We've had like the same uh, pretty similar core group of kids since we played uh, back when we were like eight, nine years old. So we all know each other very well. We're all really good friends. Well, you know you have those guys that you can rely on to play and you're not worried about like a rebuild year as people call it. Coaching buddy Eric Knickerbocker, well, he is rebuilding in his first season as the head coach of the Rockville Rams. Now, the Rams, they have not had a winning season since 2004. They went 1-9 and nine last season, but this year they're off to a 4-1 and one start.
It's just trusting each other. It's all that really matters. If we trust each other, we trust the coaches, we're gonna have to, we're gonna be successful. We really don't have any respect right now. What what we need to do is try and gain it and let everyone know that we're not one in nine Rockville anymore. Now, Coach Knickerbocker, he has coined the term restore the rock. John Henry, we're going to see if that restoration process continues tonight. This game, it kicks off in just a few minutes live in Stafford Springs. Gabrielle Lucivero, NBC Connecticut Sports. Seven Subway High School game of the week. You sent us to catch undefeated Stafford East Windsor Somers co-op hosting 4-1 upstart Rockville. The Rams get off to a great start this year in their quest for their first winning season since 2004. And they get off to a great start in this game as Kiwan Green takes the pitch and scoots eight yards for the score, 7-0 Rockville. Second quarter, Bulldogs respond. Colton Engel hits Cody Jibo, who wriggles in for the 13-yard TD. Stafford led 23-7 at half, but rally time in the fourth quarter. Ben Ambro to Jaquan DeFord, 75 yards, touchdown. Two-point conversion cuts Stafford's lead to eight. But Stafford, too much on this night. Engel hits Jibo for his second TD of the night. Stafford stays undefeated, 6-0 with a 30-15 win over Rockville. North Brantford and Stafford, and we're having a little trouble reading the numbers tonight. North Brantford adding a little brown to that purple and white. It was mud pit city all over the place. But you know who loves mud is Julian Rivas. He saw washes through the slop here for the first down and then from inside the two you know sometimes when it's raining you just got to put meat on meat and see who's stronger and this time it was Stafford. Revis scores again puts Stafford ahead for good a 21 to 6 victory for the Bulldogs who will go for an unbeaten season by the way before they get ready for the playoffs they get Windsor locks the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving in North Brantford will play at Coggenshog to finish their so from well Portland they that might be a pretty interesting game to watch, actually. Yeah, and they, they can throw the ball. Their combination of Karstetter to right from quarterback and receivers were really good. Uh, and the fun part about that, too, is Pequot's got two divisions. you got the Yonkas and the Sasakas. And Stafford's over there in the Yonkas. you got Cromwell over there in the Sasakas. There's rarely any crossover. You know, generally one game crossover between the two. So you got the best of the two divisions going against each other. You know, who's the, who's the Pequot team to beat there? And Sodia this year really didn't break into the top 10. I don't think until maybe the other side of it there, you've got Adam Kellymorth, Stafford, East, Windsor, Summers. That's uh, the other side of that bracket. Yeah, yeah. Two dream seasons from the Pequot Collide. You have Adam Kellymorth, 10 wins, 10 and 1, best season in school history. They have a big line. They have a, a, they love to run the ball with da uh, Dalton Muldeen and Toby Callender, the quarterback. Um, and then they run up against the Stafford team, which, listen, the, 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 just a few years ago, four years ago, before Brian Mazzoni got there, he was, uh, they were 0-11, and, and now look at him now with Colton Angle, with Julian Revis, and just so many other playmakers there. Tremendous team. That's going to be that tough one. The other Class right. S semifinal, Adam Killingworth taking on Stafford, East Windsor, Summers, and what a game. Third quarter, 14-7 HK. Bulldogs on the move. Quarterback Tyler Ouellette to Colton Angle. Nice move, and he gets into the end zone. And we are tied at 14. To overtime we go. Cougars on the one-yard line. Toby Callender goes into the end zone. HK takes a 21-14 lead. Stafford had one last chance, but HK's defense makes a stand. Cougars win. Final score, 21-14. to About the other side of the bracket, for more on that, as well as a check on Class L, here's our reporter, Andrew Brill. In one of the Class S semifinals, it was the seventh seed taking on the three seed at Enfield High School. The rain didn't dampen the spirits of the Haddam Killingsworth cheerleaders. The conditions did take their toll on both teams, however. Early first quarter, Colton Angle throws a slippery ball to Julian Rivas. He's thrown down by Zach Kaufman and coughs up the football. That leads to the Cougars punching it in from about a yard out to put Haddam Killingsworth on top 7-0. Defense took over from there. In the sloppy conditions, Trey Callender with the sack of Angle. The Bulldogs did start to move the ball. Here, Angle completes again to Rivas, and that's good for a first down. Later, Angle drops back to pass. He'll go short to Sam Lawson. Lawson turns upfield. Following some blocks, the Cougars will finally bring him down after he gets the first down. Bulldogs would tie this game at 14 in the second half, but the Cougars pull their way into the state final with a 21-14 win. This game was moved to Enfield High School, and I don't have the shot sheet for this one. I'm going to look for it as you look at the highlights. 
Okay, I don't have the highlights. This one was another blowout, though, as we move on to the Class S quarterfinal scoreboard.